Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different and something that I might be implementing on my channel every Tuesday. So let me know by the end of this video if you like it and if this is something you want to see more of on my channel. It is going to be a Nigerian mukbang. I don't know. I think there's probably a couple of these videos online. I want to share this part of my culture with you guys. It goes this way. So yeah, so we're going to be eating and we're going to be um, talking about a couple of topics. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. I need to change my carb. I don't know if it's the carbon monoxide or the smoke detector battery. You're going to hear a beep, okay? It, it just is what it is. I tried to change it and it went beep. So I'm just like, you know what? I'd rather a beep every 20 seconds than a just screech and beep, you know? I'm going to try to do as minimal editing as possible in this video because I just want to come raw real talk i'll try to edit out the beeps as much as possible because it, it is cringy it is so yeah so let's get started so this is a west african dish specifically a nigerian dish if you've never seen a nigerian dish before it is um two parts you have your pounded yam or your eba or your gary what could you eat with it gary pounded yam eba yeah so you have this and it's i don't I, i'm you guys i'm not even gonna lie to y'all i'm not the most savvy like i'm not the most like nigerian food savvy so don't like don't you know anyways so this is the pounded yam basically yam pounded <laughs> it starts off as like a um as kind of like a powder and you mix it in a pot you add water and you literally pound the yam pow, pow, pow. that's why it's called pounded yam um, and then in this bowl, you have your soup. So this is banga soup that I'm eating now and a piece of fish. I, um, actually my mom, I, I only know how to make two Nigerian soups. Don't kill me. Um, but there's a variety of soups that you can eat, that you can make as well. And with this, I believe the ingredients are like trophy and banga. It's like a blended seed. It's, it's. I'll bring my mom on the channel to explain further but that's just a very basic understanding of this dish that I'm eating because I know you're probably like what is that I remember growing up because I am Nigerian American I remember growing up and people being like oh my god like what do y'all eat like monkey and I was just like I, I, why would someone eat a monkey anyways that's the topic so the topic of this video so the first topic is going to be about Jeannie Mai um, and her comments on The Real. I love The Real. I'm an avid watcher of The Real. I love the girls on The Real. I'm going to play the clip from The Real um, and I'm going to play some of Jeannie Mai's comments from The Real and then we'll talk about it. Also, sidebar, so yes, you do use your hands to eat this dish. Um, of course, you want to wash your hands. Some people will have the bowl of water in front of them so you can rinse your hands in the bowl and then get the going. Okay, so yes, this is not weird. You do eat it with your hands. You see it? Oh, yes. Yeah, ma'am. Yes. Round of applause. Who saw it? Okay, okay. okay. Well, they both All black people saw it. This six-part docuseries which documents how Kelly used this power and influence to allegedly sexually and physically abused young girls has caused the mute R. Kelly movement to grow even stronger. Uh. However, not everyone is ready to turn off their ignition. The Blast reported that following the show's airing, Spotify saw a 16% increase in R. Kelly music stream. Coming up, you guys, and this is seriously, is that if this were blonde hair, blue eyed white girls that a man was doing this to, no. Would this be shut down? Heck no. The National Guard would be standing in front of that studio saying we need to see if this girl's okay. 100%. There's no right. way. If you watch the documentary, that woman goes to find her daughter, Asriel, and she's standing outside of the thing, and they're just like, we can't go in there. If that was a white young girl and a black man had her in there, they would have governors, senators. It would be crazy. I don't know if it's a color thing. I think in general, women are abused and violated, and we are desensitized. For sure. Because it happens too commonly. So people who hear it they're just like oh that, that i mean it just happens anyway play the record but you that, think it was I a white family it. standing outside of that that studio where it looked like a like a prison i mean granted it's like a warehouse studio but if that woman was standing out there crying saying I, I need to just know that my daughter is okay in there and they were like no i don't know because at this moment i feel that women of all color are being violated in places that we're not taking care of them yes so i agree with them yes that's like Ooh, this food is good. Okay, so let me start by saying I'm actually, or I guess was, um, a Jeannie Mai fan. Like, I really liked Jeannie Mai on the show. A lot of times I agreed, related, you know, just enjoyed her character, her personality, her mom. 
like I've been a true genie my fan and one thing about being a fan of someone is that we're all human so I know for a fact I'm not gonna agree with every single thing that you know all of these women have to say but I did notice I first noticed, you know, I first started giving Jeannie Mai the side eye when I started doing my, you know, research on the black fishing story. Everyone said I was reaching when I, when I, when I started exposing these black fishers. Everyone said I was reaching. Oh, you're doing too much. Oh, well, you were weave. Oh, you're, you're jealous. You're this and you're that. A lot of people drag me for filth on this here internet, okay? But once it hit television, once it hit daytime TV, now everyone started to say, oh, okay, this is a real thing. This is a real issue. Cool. No problem. I'm just glad the message got out. And one thing I didn't like, um, and I actually posted it on my Instagram, was Jeannie Mai's response um, to the black fishing here sure sure and i want to look at just another perspective too and, and adrian tell me if, you, if this makes sense here because you kind of you dwell in the beauty industry as well yeah. beauty is a, is a form of transformation beauty is a way of taking on to different looks and um and manipulating yourself in ways to just play the imaginary world we have men that put on lashes and different colors of foundation patrick star is a beautiful like example drag. yeah but but they're not drag yeah. and they're not going to say they're women it's just be it's make makeup Makeup is the transforming yourself to whatever you want to be, like no, a unicorn, uh, uh, in order to just play what beauty is to you. That's so for her, I, but I'm just saying, if a woman wants to put on a foundation that's a bit tanner because she likes a tanner look on her. That's a I total just, different look, though, Jeannie. But I'm we don't sorry. know how dark she tans, but we don't know how dark that's she tans. That's a different, that's different shade of foundation in the summer as well. Got it. So but just, I'm you know, I'm saying. asking. So that's when I first started giving Jeannie the side eye and I was just like, okay, so you're not that chick to go to bat for black women. You're not her. Now, if you've watched The Real or if you know about Jeannie Mai, she's definitely that chick that's going to go to bat for fetishizing black men. When, you know, let me jump back to the R. Kelly conversation. When it's time to incriminate, when it's time to um, support when it's time to fight for black men, it's, it's like two completely different conversations. Like it's the conversation of, oh, I love black men. You know, hard eyes, I love black men. When it's time for sex, but when it's time for, okay, well, these are the issues in the black community. These are the issues that we have with black men. These are the issues that we face with police brutality with black men. That, that same love is not, is, is not available that same love is not readily available that same love is not presented as it would be when we talk about sex and that is called fetishization you fetishize black men because yes they are beautiful they are sexy they you know but there's a lot of issues that we especially as black women because we are you know the group that deal closely with black men when we have issues all of a sudden we don't get that support from the other side. We don't, we don't always get it. And I'm not going to say, you know, <coughs> let me let this beep go by. Adrian, and you saw Adrian was starting to say it, but she didn't say it. But Adrian was basically trying to say like, you're trying to all lives matter this Black Lives Matter situation. We completely understand that all lives matter. We understand that all girls matter, all women matter. What we're talking about right now is the racial issue where we feel like young black girls, it seems in this situation does not matter. Because when it was the Bill Cosby situation where he was raping and you know giving drugs to these grown ass white women, you know, we take his show, we completely cancel him, we throw him in jail. We call him all types of names, we throw him in jail. Which, which so, I agree with by the way. But now, it's young black girls and it's, well, all girls matter. Bitch, we ain't talking about all girls. Whew, let me calm down. All girls are not captive under R. Kelly's power right now. He specifically sought out the group of people that he knew that he could manipulate for so many years without any cop, officer, anyone, government issue, anyone 
coming to question him. Jeannie has spoken about, you know, her, her mission and the work that she does in Vietnam, you know, to help women in Vietnam. And I completely support that. I completely agree with that. And I feel like her attachment is that she has seen a lot of women suffer who aren't black. So she feels like, well, you know, I've seen the suffering of non-black women. So you can't just say, you know, black women. But we're talking about here in America. We're not talking about Vietnam. We're talking about here in America. The blonde hair, blue eyed America's sweetheart, untouchable. You know, if a black man was even in a park, we've seen this. If a black man was even in a park, in a, a predominantly white neighborhood park, you know, maybe with his child, the cops would be called. He would be arrested. He would be convicted of so many crimes for just innocently living in a predominantly white neighborhood. Now, let that have been a white girl that was in that house, in that studio, and, the, and, and, the, and they called the cops. Jeannie, the question is, if there was a white girl that was in that studio and the parents called the cops, would the cops have gone in there yes or no and she couldn't answer that for some reason you couldn't simply answer that for a parent to call a police and say my daughter is in this house she's underage i have not seen her i just want to do a wellness check and for the cops like adrian said to basically be like well, they have to open the door for us to go in. When y'all have busted into homes, y'all have busted into innocent people's homes without regard, have shot innocent people without regard to evidence to, oh, well, we need permission. When have you ever needed permission to do anything against black people? But when it's to help black people, when it's to fight for black people, now all of a sudden you need the permission. And Jeannie Mai, knowing this, couldn't even sit there and say, you know what, I have seen, you know, I have seen brutality against women up across the board, but in this situation, you know what, if it was a white girl, because of history, because of what we've seen in recent history, it's a, like facts. They would have bust that door down. They would have got their daughters back. I'm gonna jump back to Blackfish. Let me eat my food, girl. Who get cut? So I also wanna discuss the Blackfish and her comparing it to her bringing up Patrick Star and comparing it to oh you know we women wear makeup and you know extensions you know some some gay men dress in drag they dress as women now if Patrick Star was to dress up as a black woman that would be a problem I don't understand why people are trying to to bring sexuality into this this is a race topic we would side eye him as we would a woman who wants to dress up as a black woman and reap the benefits of getting black deals but then go home and wash her blackness off and be able to say to an officer oh i'm white so i get a pass that's the topic at hand genie and it's for some reason it's like when i first saw her say that i side eyed it like girl what are you talking about why would you even bring up patrick star like what are you crazy it's like at this point genie you said what you said you've not said it once you said it twice you know you complete it's like you completely jump on the black man's bandwagon but completely neglect the black woman and it's like why can't you ever understand what we mean but you can always understand <sighs> and I want to say shout out to Adrian. Adrian is the example of like literally like all women coming together, listening to each other and standing up for one another. You know what I mean? Like Adrian was like, yo, nah, like we've seen this before. Like for sure something would have been done had that been two blonde hair, blue eyed parents looking for their blonde hair, blue eyed daughter in captive of a black man. I've, I've definitely seen Adrian evolve as a person, as a woman, and even in her thinking. And I really appreciate you, Adrian, for sticking up and standing up because it's like some people just really completely don't fucking get it. All they get is black men are sexy. But I don't see that. I, yeah, I don't, I don't see that, but but you can see some BBC though. You see BBC, but you don't see how, I'm gonna tell you this is so seasoned. Even the fish, girl. Lonnie says the best line of the episode. The thing is, is, I don't care about what your look is, okay? Everybody wants our rhythm, but you don't want our blues, all right? Yeah. Go off, lady in the audience. 
You want the rhythm, but you don't want the blues. You want the rhythm, but you don't want the blues. Trust me, we don't even want our own goddamn blues. So we know you don't want the blues, especially when you can easily take it off or put it on when it's convenient for you. And that was the whole that was the whole argument of black fishing, of you profiting off of being black when you're not black. You pretending to be black when you're not black. And yes, I'm counting mixed race into that. Racially ambiguous. Being mixed with black when you're not that, but profiting off of it. Jeannie, you want the rhythm, you want the stroke, but you don't want the folks, okay? You want the strokes, but you don't want the folks. And that's why we have the Black Lives Matter movement because people want black bodies, you know what I mean? You want the black bodies to satisfy you, but the life of that black body does not matter. And for that, Jeannie Mai, until I hear you stand up for black women, I'm canceling you because I just don't like the fact that you sit up on a talk show with millions of viewers and I have never ever, and you guys can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I've never ever heard you stand up, agree, or just understand where someone's coming from in response to black women. Never. But we'll be the first one. Ooh, some black tea! And that's the reality of the situation, you know. This fish is mad juicy. Like. I know it's probably weird for y'all. Y'all probably never seen nobody eat with their hands before, right? Um, I think some Asian dishes. Mm. I love being Nigerian. So y'all, I'm gonna finish my food edit this video but y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section i just think we gotta call it what it is you know it's fine to have your opinion it's fine to have an opposite opinion but it's also okay to say you know what i see exactly where you're coming from and you know i see why you think like this because dang you know like he's been doing this for so long to young black girls and nobody cared and we have seen examples of when this happens to white girls, everybody cares. Despite probably popular belief, I do wish we lived in a world where everything didn't have to be about color. And I wish we didn't have to live in a world where it was like, oh, well, you know, black girls matter, black lives matter. I wish it was just like, oh my God, a human being, let's fight for this. But that's not the reality. So we gonna call a spade a spade, protect all of our girls, yes. But right now we're talking about R. Kelly and him preying on black girls. So when we're talking about a topic and you say, well, all lives matter, that's very disrespectful and discrediting to the people involved in this situation. If Jeannie Mai was to go on a rant and you know, the topic was, you know, human trafficking in Vietnam and if somebody was to sit up there and say, well, you know, girls in the Bronx get trafficked too. So it's not just about girls in Vietnam. Like, you know, I know some girls in the Bronx that got um, trafficked too, so we need to talk about that. She would flip the, you would see the Vietnamese come out of her. She would flip the lid. She would flip the lid because have respect for what we're talking about at the moment. If you want to talk about women in the Bronx getting human traffic, then we can have that conversation as well. But don't use that to belittle the topic at hand. Let me stop screaming at my camera. <laughs> So that's the end of the video. Some people will understand, some people won't.